Good morning, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for this third day of January, and it is Monday, and I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, and hope and pray that he's your Lord and Savior today. If not, well, today is that day of salvation, so the Bible says, boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth, so... Uh, life is a vapor, so make sure you are uh, right with God and trusting Jesus as your Lord and Savior today. Amen. All right, well, today's topic is titled, Why We Do What We Do, for the Baptist Bread Devotional. And uh, then the Boots on the Ground book uh, is, topic is, again, it is New Regime. And so that would be the one for the Boots on the Ground, but we'll get into those in a little bit. But first, we're going to sing one. With Brother Dean and Sister Patty with the scripture song first. Amen. So press play and we'll get started on that. <clears throat> Colossians 3.16 Let, Let the, the word, word of Christ, Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Amen. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Let the word of Christ Dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. So let uh, us uh, take that into our hearts. Amen. All right. So as you put that to the side and do that again towards the end of the broadcast. But now it's time to get into today's Baptist bread topic and it's titled again why we do what we do and the passage is from first corinthians nine sixteen b and it says here i preach the gospel for necessity is laid upon me yea woe is unto me if i preach not the gospel amen so if you're saved or to go out there and preach the gospel to every creature and tell everybody about jesus wherever you're at and today's author is d-o and that would be the initials for uh, Don Oam, and it says Pastor of Immertius. I keep uh, can't pronounce that name every time I try to read it. It's E M E R I T U S, Immertius, and it's uh, Lighthouse Baptist Church in San Antonio, Texas. And so let me read you what he wrote on this topic of what we do or why we do what we do. All right, so he says here, why do we do what we do? That may seem like an odd question to some. Lay aside the muddle of ministry and ponder with me. Why do we do what we do? Yes, there is a calling of God. One would do well to know their call to God's ministry, missions, evangelism, church planting, etc. So wherever God has you, uh, that is where he would want you, amen, and wherever he might be calling you, a certain uh, uh, missions ground, or um, we're all called to go and evangelize and go out and tell people about Jesus and be a bold witness. That's what we're all uh, commanded to do. It's the Great Commission. Uh, once you're saved, you uh, go out and tell everybody else about Jesus so they can have an opportunity to be saved, amen, and that's something all of us can do. And so, continue on, he says, Yes, there is the commandment of God to go ye therefore and teach all nations. Yes, there is the command commission of God, which is the sending forth with the mandate, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name and among the nations. The Bible, in its totality, ascribes only one intention of God to save mankind, right? God does not want any to perish, but all to come to repentance and believe on his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. And then they can be washed in the blood of the Lamb, amen, and have your sins forgiven. All right, continuing on, it says, One scholar said it well, 
The Bible is not a book about theology. Rather, it is a theology in missions. It is God reaching out to man by man reaching out to man through God's calling, commandment, and commission. Christian, uh, Christian missions uh, only make sense in the light of an existing emergency. It is the conviction that there is an answer to the emergency which exists and demands attention. The emergency is the fact that overpowering, infecting sin in our world threatens mankind's very existence. There would be no need for Christian missions if sin were not a serious reality, right? <clears throat> uh, sin makes salvation and missions necessary. Why do we do what we do? Think about it. There are only four chapters in the Bible where sin is not an emergency. Genesis 1 and 2 and Revelation 21 and 22. Hmm. So that is the end of the topic, why we do what we do. So we're to go out there and preach the gospel to every creature and tell everybody about Jesus so they don't have to perish in their sin. Amen. And it's by one man that sin entered into the, into the world and um, death by sin. But praise the Lord that Jesus Christ came down to this earth and uh, lived a holy, sinless life. And he didn't just stay on this earth and live that life, but he willingly went to the cross and died for our sins and was buried and rose again the third day according to scripture. And he did that for you and for me so we can have uh, that uh, relationship with him and be reconciled with him. Amen. So make sure you get that right in your heart today. You don't have to die in your sin, friend. You can trust Jesus today. Praise the Lord. All right. So that's the end of the Baptist Bread devotional topic. And now I'll go ahead and get into the Boots on the Ground devotional by Randy Wells. And again, this title is New Regime. And this takes place on January 3rd, 1868. And the passage is from 1 Thessalonians 4, 3. It says, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification. <clears throat> All right, so he writes here, In 1600, a medieval samurai warrior named to Ku Kuawa uh, y Yaso uh, ended hundreds of years of samurai warfare with the establishment of the Tokugawa uh, sh shogunate, uh, similar to the ancient Greek Olgarchery. The shogunate was a centralized f uh, f feudal system uh, in which more than 200 clans or Han, uh, may maintained fiscal and military an autonomy while their lords served as part of Tukugawa's authoritarian government. From Tukugawa's rule uh, for the next 250 years, the Shogunite pre presided over a dynasty that focused on reestablishing order in social, political, and international affairs. To that end, this dynasty prohibited trade with Western nations and excluded Christian missionaries. Following U.S. Navy Com Commodore Matthew Perry's arrival in 1854, Japan opened up trade with America and the Shugenites' days were numbered. On 3 January 1868, Japanese Emperor M Miji orchestrated a coup de diet. Uh, when the incumbent sh uh, shogun resigned. Uh, known as the Meiji Re Restoration, the event transformed Japan into a modern state by establishing new technology and transportation, as well as restructuring and strengthening their military. The Meiji Restoration reminds us of the salvation and sanctification process in a Christian's life. Salvation is that single moment of choice to truly f or to trust fully in Christ's sacrifice on the cross as payment for our sin. At this moment, the Holy Spirit takes up residence in our lives and be begins t a transformation process from within. This process is called sanctification. The Meiji Restoration started the process of transformation, but it took time to modernize the country. Similarly, 
the Holy Spirit takes up residence when we accept Christ, or receive Christ, I should say, when we receive Christ, but the work that he begins in us takes a lifetime. Sanctification begins at salvation, but we must make the daily choice to submit to and follow the Holy Spirit's leading in our lives. Amen. So, um, being redeemed by the blood of the Lamb is a in, uh, thing that happens right away. And it uh, isn't a process, but um, the other part where we're trying to live a holy uh, life and a Christ-like life while we're on this earth <clears throat> and not giving into the flesh and the devil and the world is a um, process. And uh, one day we'll get our new bodies and um, praise the Lord for that when that happens in the rapture or if you die first and then uh, the rapture, ha rapture happens. So... Until then, let's try to always uh, be uh, doing what's right according to the Word of God. Amen. Being Christians. All right, so that's the end of the topic, New Regime. Amen. And so, put that aside. And now it's time to get into today's hymn and hymn story. And this is from the hymn, uh, was The Way of the Cross Leads Home. So, I'll read you this uh, one here. I'm not too sh familiar with this one. So, this is written by Jesse B. Pounds and Charles H. Gabriel. So, I'll read you the stanzas here. There's three of them. Now, the first one says, I must needs go home by the way of the cross. There's no other way but this. I shall, excuse me, I shall ne'er get sight of the gates of light if the way of the cross I miss. Uh, I must needs go on in the blood-sprinkled way, the path that the Savior trod, if I ever climb to the heights of sublime, where the soul is at home with God. Then I bid farewell to the way of the world, to walk in it nevermore. For my Lord says, Come, and I seek my home, where he waits at the open door. The way of the cross leads home, the way of the cross leads home. It is sweet to know as I onward go. The way of the cross leads home. Amen. It sure does. All right. So, um, get into the story now. This is written in 1906, and the passage is from Mark 10:21. So go to Mark 10:21. All right. So Mark 10 and 21. <clears throat> All right, and I'll go back here and give you the context of what's going on here. And uh, this starts in verse 17, and it says, And when uh, he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy mo father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. So he'd rather hold on to his possessions and stuff than do what Jesus said. And then 23 it says, And Jesus looked around, around about, and saith unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answereth again, and saith unto them, Children, how hard is it? For them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they were astonished at, out of uh, astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? And Jesus, looking upon them, saith, With men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. Amen. So... Praise the Lord for that. So you too can have eternal life, whether you're rich or poor. 
Amen. You just have to believe on what Jesus Christ did on the cross for you. All right. So now we get into the uh, story here. The way of the cross leads home. All right. All right. So it says here, I know that my Redeemer liveth anywhere with Jesus. The touch of his hand on mine and the way of the cross leads home were all written by a Midwestern woman named Jessie Brown Pounds. Jessie was born in 1861 in Hurham, Ohio, outside Cleveland. Her father, Holland Brown, was a pioneer preacher among the Disciples of Christ. Her mother, Jane Avell Brown, loved children's literature and encouraged Jessie from kindergarten to write poetry. Jessie began writing poems and articles for Christian magazines when she was 15, and for over 30 years she wrote hymns and religious poetry for Charles H. Fillmore, uh, which he set to music. Like Jessie, Fillmore was a member of the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, and the two became a pro prolific gospel songwriting team. In 1897, Jessie, 38, married John E. Pounds, pastor of the Central Christian Church in Indianapolis, and one Sunday, a few weeks after her wedding, she woke up feeling unwell. Her husband went to church without her, and in the quietness of the morning, Jessie began thinking of heaven. Taking a pen, she scribbled out a poem titled, Beautiful Isle of Somewhere. It became a favorite hymn of President William McKinley and was sung at his funeral after he was assassinated in Buffalo, New York. Somewhere the sun is shining, somewhere the songbirds dwell. Hush then, thy sad repining, God lives and all is well. Somewhere, somewhere, beautiful isle of somewhere, land of the true, where we live anew, beautiful isle of somewhere. In all, Jesse wrote nine books, 50 cantata uh, libretos, and over 400 hymns. We don't know the background behind The Way of the Cross Leads Home, but many have speculated that it was inspired by a popular story and sermon illustration that was circulating during those days. The geographical heart of London is Charing Cross, which is referred to locally simply as the cross. A London police officer came upon a lost child who was unable to tell him where he lived. Finally, amid sobs and tears, the child simply said, If you will take me to the cross, I think I can find my way home from there. I must needs go home by the way of the cross, wrote Jesse Pounds. There's no other way but this. Amen. And there sure isn't. So, got to go to the cross and uh, lay your burdens down there at the cross and trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. Amen. <clears throat> All right, so that's the end of today's hymn and hymn story. And tomorrow's hymn and hymn story is uh, from the hymn, Go Tell It on the Mountain, written by John W. Work, Jr. And this is an American folk song. And it was written in 1907. And the passage is from Luke 2.20. So that would be tomorrow's hymn and hymn story. And now I'll go ahead and get the scripture song book and we'll sing some scripture songs again before I wrap it up. So we'll go to yesterday's, which was from the second, and sing that one, and then we'll conclude with today's. Alright, so yesterday's is Jeremiah fifteen sixteen. Jeremiah fifteen sixteen. Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart, for I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. Amen. Thy word was found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts, thy words were found. And I did eat them, for I am called by thy name. Amen. All right. Colossians.
Colossians 3.16 Let the, Let the word of Christ, Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Amen. Here we go. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Okay. Well, that'll be it for today's broadcast. But before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song and then the topics for the devotionals. All right. So tomorrow will be the fourth already. And the passage is from Psalms 119.57 for tomorrow's scripture song. And it says, Thou art my portion, O Lord. I have said that I would keep thy words. So will we keep God's words? Uh Amen. Let's go ahead and do that today. All right, so that is tomorrow's scripture song. And then tomorrow's topic is titled, The Sin of Anticipation. Uh, and the passage is from Matthew 6, 34. So that's tomorrow's Baptist bread topic. And then the Boots on the Ground devotional is titled, Change of Plans. And this takes place on... January 4th, 1913, and the passage is from Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. So that would be tomorrow's Boots on the Ground devotional, and this is uh, by Randy Wells, and you can probably find this book somewhere on the internet, or perhaps at your local bookstore. I'm not sure if they carry it at the bookstore or not, or if you can order it that way, but uh, that's the name of that book. And then the Him and Him story for tomorrow is... Uh, Go Tell It on the Mountain, from this book, Then Sings My Soul, Book 2, 150 of the World's Greatest Hymn Stories, written by Robert J. Morgan, and that can be found perhaps at your local bookstore or definitely online somewhere at abooks.com or Amazon or someplace like that. All right, and then the Scripture Songs book and CDs are available on the website at www.dailyscripturesongs.com, and that's Brother Dean and Sister Patty's website and that's uh for their um mission uh page there and they are missionaries to guyana and lord willing they'll be heading back there um sometime later this month i believe it's the 20th they said their uh, target date is so pray for them and pray they can get back over there and be full-time missionaries uh for the rest of their days on this earth until jesus takes uh us home um whether it be in the rapture or by death so um Amen. So pray for them and all missionaries around the world. And you too can be a bold witness, as I was reading there, why we do what we do. Uh, The Great Commission to go out and preach the gospel to every creature. So let's go do that today. Um, Tell somebody somewhere. Amen. And then the Baptist Bread devotional booklets are available online at www.baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org. Uh, I think that website's still up. I'm going to have to check that later to find out. Um, And then, of course, the address here for Brother Tim Green is uh, uh, P.O. Box 1, Day Heights, Ohio, 45150. And then if you want to write to uh, um, this address here, Baptist Bread at 37055 Joy Road, Westland, Michigan, 48185. And their phone number is 734-425-0466. Or you can email them at bb at joybaptist.com. So that's all that information. Amen. All right. And um, just started uh, doing the broadcasts on my podcast uh, platform on Anchor uh, slash Spotify or um, iHeart Radio. Uh, those are the three platforms I have them up on now. So you can go check me out there. Uh, it's uh, God's Messenger Lighthouse podcast. And I've been reading uh, The Hiding Place, the Triumphant true, true story of Corey Temboom, and I'm um, going to be reading all sorts of different uh, missionary uh, stories and different heroes of the uh, Christian faith books. So check out that uh, podcast, and also um, if you don't 
like to watch video and just uh, have just time for audio while I've been um, doing my uh, the or the Baptist Bread uh, devotional uh, podcast broadcast on that uh, um, platform also. So you can go check out the audio uh, version only, the audio only version, sorry, and uh, check that out and just listen to the audio if you don't um, want to watch the videos. So that's another way to uh, listen to the um, Baptist Bread devotional and scripture song broadcast. Amen. So praise the Lord. And also check out um, Brother Kevin Rimlinger's, uh, Rimlinger's uh, podcast. It's titled Running Waters Podcast. And um, also Brother Ed uh, Worth has his own um, Facebook um, broadcast that he does. Uh, he does Q&A every Monday night and also has been going through the Book of John. Uh, I'm not sure when he's getting ready to start that back up, but you can go check him out by uh, looking up KJV Bible Scope, Amen, on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, praise the Lord. And then Brother Tim uh, Tim Crotz is uh, uh, the pastor of uh, Bear Trail Baptist Church, and he's got his own uh, radio program that he does. And so go check that out, Amen. So many, many out there trying to get the Word of God out and teachings uh from the bible amen so those are just a few of uh them and then of course uh brother james knox uh, uh check him out on the uh, youtube page by typing in james knox sermons or going to www.jameswknox.org the church website amen all right well this is brother scott signing off so thanks again for watching and may the lord richly bless you until next time bye for now